Proverbs 13, 5, it says, A righteous man hateth lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and cometh to shame. Now, loathsome means he's hated and, and shameful, right? So the wicked are shameful. But notice this first part of this verse. This is very important. He says, A righteous man hateth lying. The Bible does teach that we should hate certain things. The Bible does teach a form of righteous hatred. But I have to warn you, there is also evil hatred, right? We talked about King Saul this past Sunday where he was, he was bothered, he was troubled by an evil spirit, and he was speaking death and hate into everybody else in his house. He was prophesying of an evil spirit. Now, he was a Christian, and he was saying things that were more hateful than what God wanted him to say. And I just want to make this point here, because the Bible is saying a righteous man hates things, but it's also a warning that there is an evil form of hatred, whether you're saved or unsaved. And, and I've known some people that are they're, they're, they're more about the evil hate than they are the righteous hate. And we as Christians need to righteously hate certain things. Well, what kind of things? Well, here he says lying, right? We should hate it when somebody is intentionally twisting the truth. We need to hate the lying lips. In Psalms 15, it says that we need to hate them that love violence. We need to hate the people that just love to hurt the innocent. It's okay to hate those people and to hate that type of violence. In Proverbs 11, he says that we should hate suretyship, which is credit. He's saying we should hate people that would make a promise for somebody else's debt, right? And what's he saying? If you do that, then you won't go in debt, right? Well, I've got a pretty good credit score. Let me sign up and get you a car. I'll get you a car too. Hey, go ahead and bury yourself, right? I should hate that attitude. I hate credit. I hate being in debt. So as long as I do that, then I will not hurt myself. He also says in Proverbs 15 that we should hate greed. We should hate greedy people or greed in general, but we should hate greed in ourself. If you find yourself being greedy about certain things, you should learn to hate that to protect yourself. He says in Proverbs 13 here and other places that we should hate lying and the false lips, the false way. Proverbs 28, he says we should hate covetousness. We should hate people that are always desiring things that are not theirs, coveting something else. You know, I used to know somebody and that's all they could talk about was cars. Cars, 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 cars. There's this car and that. There's this Lamborghini and there's this Mach 1. And that. Why? Who cares? You're looking at pictures of things you've never even touched and you're so coveted. All I can think about, I just want that car. He'd probably never have it. He would probably, he's the kind of person that would go in debt over a vehicle and destroy his life. And as Christians, we should not love covetousness and love a desire for things. We need to hate covetousness and make sure that we're never out of balance loving something more than God. Covetousness is compared to idolatry, you know. In Malachi chapter 2, he says that God hates putting away. We should hate divorce. Now, I'm not saying hate the divorced. Well, I know somebody and they're divorced and remarried. We should hate them. Wrong. We should hate divorce. Make sure in your own life, make sure you never get divorced. You should hate that word. You should hate that thought. You should hate anybody that recommends you and your, your, your husband and your wife, a, a spouse would separate. You should teach your children to hate divorce because we love the family. Right? All these things are in balance because, hey, there is a time to love and a time to hate. But when it's time to hate, as Christians, it needs to be righteous hate. If it's the wrong kind of hate, you're guilty of sin. Right? He also says that we should hate God's enemies. Now, this is where you get into an interesting area. Well, yeah, we should hate God's enemies. Amen. The problem with that is there are many people that if they don't like you, well, you must be God's enemy. No. Yeah. Jesus said, love your enemy. Jesus said, love your neighbor. Jesus said, love your brother. Oh, well, who is my neighbor? Okay, well, I can see where your heart's at. Yeah. Right? Evil hate is to hate your brother. All throughout the Old and New Testament, there's warnings about hating your brother. If you hate your brother, you're in sin with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you hate your neighbor or anybody without a cause... 
You're in sin according to the Bible. Amen. That is evil hate. Now, righteous hate is to hate the things that would destroy your family, hate the things that go against the Word of God. Evil hate is to selfishly hate another person because you found a, a, a reason against them, or even without a cause. I just don't, I've never liked them. Well, that's wrong. That's a sin according to the Bible. You know, and this is very important. And, you know, we talked about King Saul, how he was hating David without a cause. He had, was troubled by an evil spirit. He was guilty of hating in an evil way. That was a sin. God judged him. And this is very relevant for most of us, in a sense, because, you know, there is, you know, a lot of us have, have associated ourselves with the new IFB. Yeah, I'm independent. Yeah, I'm fundamental. Hey, I'm Baptist. And yeah, I've got a new spirit, a newfound zeal for soul winning, the King James Bible, the Word of God, family, the, the principles that matter. But there's a problem because in the new IFB, there is a small sect of, what I, of Andersonites. Now listen, an and, there is a difference between an Andersonite and the new IFB. An Andersonite is somebody that says, well, if Anderson said so, that's what I believe. Yeah, but what about the Bible? Yeah. What about what the Bible says? Well, I don't care. Well, I want to go with what Aunt, Well, then you're wrong. Yeah. There are a lot of people all across the country that are new IFB, and they question when there's something wrong with what Anderson says, and that's the way it ought to be. We ought to follow God rather than man. Well, right. Anderson said we should hate somebody. Well, why are you hating them? If you do, you're guilty. If you hate your brother without a call. Well, Anderson said they're a reprobate. Where's the proof? Yeah. Where's the evidence? Listen, a reprobate, a, there, and we have plenty of examples in the Bible. Children of the devil. We, how do we know they're children of the devil? Because they worship the devil. They preach a false gospel. Work your way to heaven. They're sodomites. There's sodomites. There's, there's, there's those that would eat the flesh of others, as Micah 3 talks about cannibals. There's outward evidence of some of the reprobates. But here's the problem. If you are my brother, then I'm commanded to love you. And if you came to me and said, well... I believe in Jesus. I'm not really fundamental Baptist. I trust in Jesus as God and Savior. Then guess what? I have to give you the benefit of the doubt and love you unless you prove to me you're a reprobate. And this is where there is a disconnect. There is evil hatred amongst an Andersonite crowd. And that goes against what the new IFB teaches, which is righteous hatred, godly hatred for the things that would destroy families, for the children of the devil. Look, there are some celebrities in Hollywood. We can name names. It's okay to hate them. There are some false prophets in religions. We can name them. I can show you the proof that they're reprobates. It's okay to hate them. But now, well, what about old brother so-and-so that got kicked out of that church? Shouldn't we hate them? Well, I don't know. Why'd they get kicked out? I don't know. I wasn't there. Yeah. Well, they're not with us anymore. We should hate them. Wrong. Yep. That goes against the Bible. You're hating your brother without a cause, and there's darkness in your heart to do such a thing. First John 2, He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness, even until now. You can't, you can't mix that. You can't just say, well, I'm okay. No, listen, God's very clear about this. We need to even love our neighbor. We need to rebuke our neighbor instead of suffering sin. But if you hate somebody without a cause, if you falsely accuse somebody of being a reprobate, that is a sin. That's right. That is wrong. That is wicked. That's of an evil spirit. And that's exactly what Saul did. You think about it. 1 John 3, he says, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. That's what Jesus said. 1 John 4, if a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. Well, I don't think he's a brother anymore because he's not with us. He must be a reprobate. Be careful. Be careful. You will suffer the judgment of God for falsely accusing somebody of being a reprobate. Listen, there have been people out soul winning. Well, I get to the door and I'm like, I'm pretty sure that was a reprobate. But I didn't curse them out. I didn't, I didn't yell at them. I didn't tell them I hated them. I still preach the gospel. Sometimes you walk away from people saying, eh, I just don't feel right. Well, I guess I have to hate them now. No, that's not right. That's not biblical. That's not what Christianity is. Amen. That's not what it ever has supposed to have been. John 15, he says, He that hateth me hateth my father also. Right? There are the false prophets. You know, well, we believe in, in Yahweh, but we don't believe in Jesus. Okay, no, you hate both. You're not saved. Right? There's plenty of false prophets we can point to that are not saved. And listen, the old IFB is dying because they, they were over fundamental and they wanted to fight amongst themselves. They wanted to point their guns on the inside and find problems with anybody that wasn't 100% like them and begin to hate them. And that's wrong and that's wicked. 
wicked. Yep. And the new IFB, if they're not careful, they will become like the Andersonites and they will destroy themselves from within. Yep. God doesn't like that. Look, Micah 3, who hate the good and love the evil. Who hate the good and love the evil. That's a person I can hate. They're a cannibal. God won't hear their prayer and said, we need to love the good and hate the evil. And if somebody doesn't agree with you and you call them a reprobate or you say it, you teach your children it's okay to help, hate them, that's wicked as hell. In fact, you take it a step farther. Somebody says, well, well, brother so-and-so quit going to our church. His kids must be cursed children. They must be reprobates. That's wicked as hell. It's not right. God will judge that. There is righteous hate and there is evil hate and we will not put up with evil hate no. yeah. we need to be righteous in our hate and the hate starts with the sins in your own life you look in the mirror you find the things that are causing you to be weak as a Christian learn to hate that yeah. be more worried about hating that even than hating your queer neighbor down the road with a, with a rainbow flag yeah. it's okay to hate them but don't make that your one goal in life all I want to do is tell these queers I don't like them why what are you accomplishing focus on yourself build up yourself teach your children to love the Lord. Don't teach your children to hate everybody. Amen. That's yeah. evil. It will destroy. 